Welcome to the math record. For the third part of the math SAT series, we'll be covering a few practice exams. For this video, we'll be covering the first practice exam. A copy of this exam along with several others will be in the description below. I recommend solving these questions beforehand to get a feel of the math portion of SAT. If you want to just follow along, that is fine too. Alright, before we start, make sure you have all the necessary material. This includes a, a pencil, calculator, and scratch paper. For each problem, I'll be teaching you how teaching you how I, uh, my, I myself approach each question, and if you want to take notes, pause the video whenever you want. Okay, let's get started. First, the math test no calculator portion, so keep all the calculators away. Um, this math test will be 25 minutes for 20 questions, and the formulas are down here on the bottom if, if uh, you need to ever use it. Question 1. If x is minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to k and k is equal to 3, what's the value of x? Okay, first we want to substitute um, 3 equal to k. So x minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to 3. So multiply by 3 by both sides to get x minus 1 is equal to 9. And then you add 1 to both sides, and you get x is equal to 10. So the answer is D. Pretty basic question. It's just a substitution. Uh, question 2. This would be a, like a pre-calc question. It's really basic, though. It just talks about imaginary numbers. What is the sum of 7 plus 3i plus negative 8 plus 9i? First, we have to add the real parts. So it's the 7 and the negative 8. So that adds up to negative 1. Then we have to add the imaginary part, which is 3i plus 9i, which is just 12i. So that so the answer is just negative 1 plus 12i, which is a. Question 3. On a Saturday afternoon, uh, Armin sends M, tests, uh, M text messages each hour for M hours, and Tyrone sends P text message E hour for 4 hours. Which of the following represents the total amount of messages sent by Armin and Tyrone on the Saturday morning? Okay, so first we need to find Armin's total amount, which is M text messages each hour for those 5 hours. So that's 5M. And then we have to find Tyrone's, which is P text messages each hour for 4 hours now. So that's 4P. So that's the total, 5M plus 4P. So that's, the answer is C. Question 4. Kathy is a, repel te is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives a ba batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that, has that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation P is equal to 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of uh, phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. What is the meaning of 108 in this equation? Um, this is just an a, a interpretation question, so we need to read what the equation means. The equation is the number of phones that she has left to fix. It's also shown here by P. P is the number of phones left. So, uh, so if D is zero, then one o then zero times twenty three is zero and one o eight. So that's just left with the one o eight. So the one o eight is telling me that is the, there is a hundred and eight phones in the beginning. So which one does that uh says? Carthy would complete the repairs within one o eight days. Nope, it's talking about the phones. So, starts each week with 108 phones to fix. Yes, so the answer is B, because that's what we're looking for, phones. The amount of starting phones she has to fix. Pretty basic question. 5. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? This one would just be a simplifying question for polynomials. For, I mean, uh, for variables. So, we just have to find like terms. So, we have an x squared term. x squared times y. And we need to find that from here for the second equation. So that's a negative. So ne minus a negative is a positive. Do so add another one. So that is 2x squared y. And next one is a negative 3y squared. And the negative 3y squared is right here. A minus a negative negative 3. So you add a plus 3y 
squared, which equals to 0. And now the final term is 5xy squared, which you minus a positive 3xy squared. So that's 2xy squared. Sorry. So all is left is these two terms, so we just need to find that. So the answer is C. Pretty basic question, you're just simplifying variables. Question 6. A pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age, uh, a in years, between the ages of 2 and 5. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in um, inches of the height of the boy's height each year? So it says the estimated increase of each year. If it ever says each year or per year, what it's referring to is a slope. And the only slope in this equation is 3. So the answer is just A. So the slope is equal to 3, which is just shown right here. This, this 3 is in front of the variable. Number seven, the formula above gives the monthly payment M needed to pay off a loan of P dollars at R percent annual interest over N months, which the following gives P in terms of M, R, and N. Um, so this equation is asking you just to like represent the variable in a different way. So it wants to give P because right now it's represented by M. So we want to represent it by P. So this might look hard because there's a bunch of operations going on, but everything is just multiplied by P. So what you need to do is just move all those operations to the other side. So if this happens, you just got to move the uh, um, new denominator to the numerator and the numerator to the denominator. So the 1 plus R divided by 1200 to the power of N minus 1 will be in the top. So the answer would be B. Because as you see from the original equation, the top portion, which is multiplied, which are those numbers but are, that operations are multiplied, should be on the bottom, and the bottom part should be on the top, which is multiplied by m. Which makes sense. So the answer is just b. Question is really simple. It just looks hard. If a divided by b is equal to 2, what's the value of 4b divided by a? So what we... So let's, uh, like... Solve this first, so that's 4 times b over a. Um, this would be equivalent to say 4 times 1 all over a over b. Because 1 divided by um, that fraction would just be the reciprocal. So both of these are equivalent. So, uh, we already know what a over b is, it's 2, so 1, 4 over 1 over 1 half is just 2, so the answer is c. Number 9, what is the solution xy to the system equations above? Uh, 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 23, and 2x minus x 2y minus x is equal to negative 19. This is just a simple um, system of equations problem. Uh, what I notice is that there's a negative x on the second equation and a positive x on the first equation. So what I want to do is that I want to multiply the second equation by a constant so that when I add those two equations together, um, they, uh, they cancel out the variable x. So I have 3x plus 4y is equal to negative... 23. Now I want to multiply the second equation by negative 3, so I get negative 3x. I'm going to multiply the x per first and write that first. Uh, so then you can see like the terms together. So And then I multiply 2y by 3, which makes plus 2, 6y. And negative 19 times 3 is negative 57. Um... Now let's add them together. The negative 3x and the 3x add each other cancel out. So then the variable is left with 10y. And that makes negative uh, 80. 
So y is equal to negative 8. If you plug in y back into the equation, you get negative 23. Neg I mean negative 32 is equal to negative, negative 23. So 3x is equal to 9. So x has to equal to 3. So the solution is 3, negative 8. So the answer is B. Okay, number 10. For the function g defined above, uh, a is a constant and g of 4 equals 8. What's the value of g of negative 4? Where g of x is equal to a times x to the power of 2 plus 24. Okay, these are this is a quadratic equation, okay? So what you need to know about quadratics is that, let me draw a picture for you out. Uh, for a general shape like quadratic, it's reflective. Uh, the reflective is usually just parallel or is usually um, towards the y-axis. This is the y-axis right here. Um, it's usually, the parabola is usually reflective around that axis. So points like right here and here would be exactly the same. So let's say this is point x. So, and this is negative x. It would be exactly the same. So when x is equal to 2 or when x is equal to negative 2, that that means the points are exactly the same, usually for a parabola. If it's like, and if it's center at zero, if it's not center at zero, then the concept doesn't work. But you know this is center at zero because nothing is subtracted from the uh, x value. Because usually the equi if it's not a uh, center at um at zero, what it will look like it will be like like x minus some number to the squared plus like some other number and multiply by some other number. It doesn't matter. But the point here is that there's supposed to be a parenthesis and minus or plus. Then it's not at the origin. But if it's at the origin, it's parallel. Since you know that this is parallel, then four of the then four to the eight is the same thing as I mean uh G of four is the same thing as G of negative four. So G of negative four is just equal to eight. So the answer is just A. Like, this is a pretty easy question. Uh, a different way you could do this is that you could just plug the variable in. So, yeah, g of 4 would mean, like, g of 4 is equal to 8. So, 8 is equal to a times 4 squared, which is 16a plus 24. Subtract from both sides equals negative 16 is equal to 16a. So, a is ne equal to negative 1. And if you plug in negative 4 back into that, that would be 16 times negative 1, which is negative 16 plus 24 is equal to 8. So it also gives you the answer 8. But if you use the, uh, the, um, the idea of quadratics, it's a pretty basic question. Either way, it's a really easy question to solve. In the equations above, B and C represents the price in pound of chicken and, I mean, beef and chicken, respectively. X weeks after July 1st, during the la during last summer. What was the price per ch uh, beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? First, we need to find out when they're equal. So we have to set B and C equal each other. So 2.35 plus 0 0.25 is equal to 1.75 plus 0 0.4x. This is just another uh, system equation problem, but now you're only looking for one um, one uh, answer. So usually I want to keep the variable x, the constant in front of the variable x, like positive. So I'll subtract by 0.25 from both sides. So that will be left with 0.35 is equal to 1.75 plus uh, 0.15x. And I subtract 1.75 from both sides, that gives me 0 0.6 is equal to 0 0.15x. So f x is equal to 4. So I need to find, but the answer is asking you what is the price of beef. So we need to plug uh, x is equal to 4 back into the equation b. So b is equal to 2.35 plus 0 0.25 times 4. 0 0.25 times 4 is 1, and 1 plus 2.35 is 3.35. So the answer is D.
Number 12. A line in the xy plane passes through the origin has a slope 1 7th. Which of the following uh, lies on the point? Lies on the point uh, and the line. Twelve is a basic uh, graph question on linear equations. So if it passes through the origin, it has to go through this point right here. This thing is straight. It might not look like it, but it's straight. And this line it has a ratio of going up by um, one y for every single seven x's. So that's what it means, basically. So it has a slope of 1 over 7. So basically, the y value has to be uh, a seventh of the x value. So the x value, so an example would be like the um, value had to be like 7, 1. So y has to be 7 times less than this. So the only answer is d. Um, if x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to 1 over, uh, 1 over, 1 over x plus 2 and 1 plus x plus 3? So what you need to do here is that you want to, um, make, uh, a common denominator. So right now we're just going to focus on the denominator. So you have 1 over x plus 2. Since you notice that x plus 2 and x plus 3, that means this the x plus 2 term has to be multiplied by x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. Because x plus 3 over x plus 3 equals 1. So this would just be the same thing as 1 over x plus 2 times 1. Because 1, 1 over x plus 2 times 1 is just 1 over x plus 2. So this is the same thing as the original equation minus the 1 over x plus 3, which we'll put in later. So... Was 1 over x plus 3 for the other part. And you want to multiply that by the other one now. By 1 by x plus 2. All over x plus 2. Which is the same concept as I used with the x plus 3. So now. Now um, if you multiply this out. This would just be x plus 3. Over x plus 2. Sorry. Over another x plus 3. And this will be also x plus 3 times x plus 2 on the other side. So the other portion would just be x plus 2. So what you will get is that you'll get 2x plus 5. All over x plus 3. Sorry, I ran out of room, but right on the bottom right here times x plus 2. Since this thing is 1 over this, over this number, sorry, over this um, uh, fraction, what you have to do is that you're going to reciprocal the denominator and numerator. So now it will be x plus 3, x plus 2, divided by 2x plus 5. And this will be our answer. So which one is equivalent? That will be answer B. Because if you just uh, factor out x squared plus 5x plus 6, it will be the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 2. So the answer is B. It's a pretty uh, general um, uh, simplifying the uh, variables, which is pretty simple. But if you don't know how to do it, uh, this video would just have taught you. If you want to become better at it, just try more problems similar to this. If 3x minus y is equal to 12, what's the value of 8x over 2y? Uh, whenever you see um, exponents questions like these, what and they're like multiple choice, usually you just want to answer like um, the, por the answer kind of portion first. Because if it has similar bases, then it's going to work. I'll show you right now. This 8... Uh, 8 to the power of x is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 times x, which is over 2 over y. Based on like exponential rules, that means 2 of 3x minus y is equivalent to this, to the fraction. So you already know what 3x minus y is equal to. It's equal to 12. So the answer is 2 to the power of 12. So the answer is just a. Another way you could solve this is that you could like rewrite the um the equation 
So let's say you get y to one side. So that's 3x minus 12 is equal to y. It's equivalent to the equation that's uh, given by the question. Now you plug that back into the uh, to the, ver the fraction. So 8x all over 2 to 3x minus 12. So that's same thing as 2 over 3x, as I sh said before, 2 over 3x minus 12. Now, uh, 3x minus, uh, parentheses, 3x minus 12, which is makes 2 to the power 2 to the power 12, which is the same thing as I said before. So the answer is A. So th those are the two ways to solve it. It's a basic exponential question. It shouldn't be that difficult. If ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 is equal to 15x squared plus cx plus 14 for all possible values of x and a plus b is equal to 8, what are the two possible values for c? Okay, first we want to distribute the terms out. So ax plus 2 times bx plus 7. So a times b is equal to just a times b. So that's x squared term plus uh, 7a plus 2b x and then 7 times 2 is 14 it has to be the same thing as 15x squared plus cx plus 14 so the 14 is the same each other so a times b has to equal 15 usually in the sat there is only uh the the numbers that multiply to each other probably are like integers so the only ways to get um and a 15 is either 1 times 15 which is like almost never the case because whenever sat does these questions is never one times the number so if they give you like three is i mean if it gives you like four is 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 usually never one times four it will, it will usually be like two times two so in in this case a times b the only possibles is three and five and the other one will be 5 and 3, because order does matter. It's depending on which one, which number is A and which number is B, the answer might change for C. C is equal to 7A plus 2B. So we had to plug in that variable uh, in. So if A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 5, then um, this would be 21 plus 10, which is 31. Or when A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 3, then it will be 35 plus 6, which equal to 41. So the two answers are 31 or 41. So what are the... So the only uh, answer is D. D. Uh, now that we finish all the multiple choice, let's move on to the free response. Um, you could read these directions during like the SAT, but usually it just means like just write it correctly. Just don't bubble it in wrong. If t is greater than zero and t squared minus four equals zero, uh, what's the value of t? So first we want to distribute out the um, the quadratic. So t squared minus four is equal to zero. So usually in this case, if there's just like the quadratic term and the a constant term. What you would do is that you would just have the quadratic term, put a parentheses, and if it's a minus, just put a plus, and then put another parentheses, and then put a t and then a minus. Okay. So if you see the constant term right, and you and it's a perfect square, just square root it. It would just be a two. So the other side is also two. So it's factored out. If it's something that's not factor outable, like let's say it's five, then just put square root five on both sides. But if it's like this, which is 4, which usually what the SAT, do, SAT does, if it's, um, they usually give, like, answers that are, like, perfect squares, so you're able to factor out. So, like, in this case, like, 4 could turn into 2, which factor out is, like, uh, act, so, which this factor out is the same thing as t squared minus 4. So, t here is equal to negative 2, and t here is equal to 2. So, these are the two possible answers. But it said in question 16 that t is greater than 0, so it has to be positive. So the answer is only 2. So 16 is 2. Pretty basic question. It's just a basic quadratic. Um, a summer camp counselor wants to find the, a length x and feet across 
a late as represented in the sketch above. The lengths represent A, B, E, B, B, D, and C, D on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, 700 feet, and 800 feet respectively. Segment A, C, and D, E intersect at B, and angle A, E, B, and C, D, B has the same measure. What's the, what's the value of X? Okay, so let me draw this out first. So something along the lines of this. Sorry my pictures look bad, but uh, um, just deal with it. So AB is equal to 1,800. Um, BT is 1,400. Wait, no, EB is 1,400. Sorry about that. Um, BD is 700, and a CD is uh, 800. So we need to find the ratio, uh, I mean, and we forgot the angles here are the same. Since these two angles are the same, it was, what they usually like give on SATs is that the, sh the, um, you could always mostly assume that if they give you one angle is similar, what they're saying is that the uh, the shape is similar. A l same thing uh, is the, with lines. If they're saying a line is parallel, usually what they're trying to say is that the entire thing is parallel. So if this is true because like vertical angles are also parallel, I mean also uh, congruent, so these two angles are the same. Since both of these... Since both triangles have two angles that are the same, that means the third angle has to be the same for both of them. So now you're ready, now you know which uh, side lengths are congruent to their, each other. So the side length BD, which is 700, all over side length CD, 800, has the same proportion as um, side length BE, which is 1400, all over X, which is AE. So to get from 700 to 1400, you just multiply by 2. So it's 800 times 2 is equal to x. So that's 1600. So the answer is 1600. It's a basic geometry question. But it might look hard because there's this picture and there's a bunch of information and numbers. But generally it's pretty easy. According to the system of equations above, what is the value of x? So this is just a... Uh, um, system equation question. Um, since there's no negative and positive on both sides I could see, um, then I should just like multiply by negative one side and just add to the other. So usually, so I see the x terms and both of them are uh, one already. So I'll just make the, the one of them uh, negative, and I'll just add to the other one. So then they would cancel out. So I'll keep the first one positive. So x plus y is negative nine, and I'll multiply the second equation by negative one. So it's negative x minus 2y is equal to 25. Uh, I do this because I want the higher negative number, I mean the lower negative, or whatever you want to say it as, as the other, as the, um, the positive term. Because then, like, in this case, 25 minus 9 is uh, 16. Because I want it, I want the final result to be a positive number. It's just easier to work with. So uh, negative x plus x is uh, 0, and negative 2y plus y is negative y. And 25 minus 9 is 16. So y is equal to negative 16. So plug in negative 16 into the equation. So x minus negative 16 is negative 9. So x is equal to 7. So the answer is 7. You can also plug it into the second equation uh, to, ma to make sure you're correct. So that would be like the second part in my step if you ever watch if you watch the f um first part of the math sat series um in a right triangle angle x where sine of x is equal to 4 over 5 what's cosine of 90 over x so for trick questions i usually make a picture so let's make a triangle a right triangle so let's say this angle is x so the sine of x is just right here, 4 over psi, because a soka toa, remember that? So so is sine opposite over hypotenuse. Um, uh, angle, a triangle angles is always 100, the sum is always 180 degrees. 
since the right triangle is already a, a 90 degrees, that means the other angle has to be 90 minus x. Because 90 minus x plus x is 90, plus the, uh, the right triangle makes another 90, makes 180 in total. So what's asking, uh, what's cosine of 90 minus x? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. So the answer is also 4 or 5. So it's usually for trig, just make a picture. A, if, uh, I mean 20, if A is equal to 5 square root 2 and 2A is equal to square root 2x, what's the value of, uh, of x? So this is just a basic uh, radical question. So let's just find out what A is um, without simplifying it. So A would just be um, square root 2 times 5 squared. Because that's how radicals work. So if there's a, a number times a number in the other in the inside, and the other number could be like uh, factorable by the radical, that makes sense. So square root of 2 times 5 square root 2 would just be square root 2 times square root 5 squared. So that would just be 5 times square root 2. So this is equivalent. So this is the same thing as 25 times 2 is 50. So a equals square root 50. So 2a, which is equal to 2 square root 50, which is the same as square root 50 times 2 to the power of 2, which is the same thing as 4, 4 times 5, which is 200. So 2a is two, square root 200. So square root 200 is equal to square root 2x, and x is equal to 100. So x is equal to 100. So the final answer is 100. Um, all these questions are pretty simple. I, I would expect you to be able to get like a full score on this. Unless you made a mistake, you maybe get like one wrong or like two. Um, let me go back to question one. For these type of questions, like one and two, I I spent like a minute or less on this. It's not really that hard. Um, three and four, you might have misread it, so you might want to double check. But other than that, it shouldn't take that long either. Around the same time. Five and six and seven. Seven, you might think it's hard. So you, this might be hard if, uh, since you notice all these variables, you might skip it in the beginning. So you might want to come back to this later and like solve it. But it shouldn't be that hard either. Five is uh, pretty easy. Just find uh, similar terms and combine them. Six, just it's just basically an equation interpretation question. So it shouldn't take you that long either. All of these should be like under a minute or so. Eight just works with proportions. So it's pretty basic. Nine and eleven both works on system equations. They're just asking like different aspects about it. So it should be maybe a minute per question just because it, you're trying to look for x and y and try to combine things together. Um, 10 shouldn't be that hard in like either way I showed before. It, it should be like a minute or so. 12 isn't that hard either. It's just a basic um, linear question. 13 might take you a while so this might be like a minute or two. Uh, you could come back to this. This might be one of the harder one in the in this section. Um, fourteen also might be one of the harder ones if you don't know how to deal with like uh, exponentials. But as I shown before, just learn your rules and you'll know. Uh, fifteen. It also might be one of the harder. I won't say harder ones, but more the longer ones. Then gives you like all the information how to solve it. Um, so that makes sense too. Now for the free response. Uh, 16 is really easy. It's a really basic quadratic question. 17 is a uh, geometry question. You might want to double check this. This might take like a minute or so. Or a minute. Or like two or three. I mean, it's a pretty basic geometry question, but it's not really that hard. But, you know, you might make a mistake. Sorry about that. 18 is a basic uh, system equation question. We have a, like a bunch of those. This might be the third one. I think. Um, 19 is a trick question. Um, just make a picture and you'll be able to solve it. These should take you like about a minute or so. And the last question is just a radical question. So you just learn how to combine. It's the same case with exponentials. Just learn your rules and you'll be able to solve it. Should be like less than a minute or so. So overall you have like a lot. Like for the 20 questions, it's like a minute or so for each question. 
some are a little bit harder than others, and some are just, like, really easy, which is called in, like, 20 and 30 seconds. Um, probably not even that long, I don't know. But, like, it's, let's just say an estimate about, like, 20 minutes to solve each question, uh, to solve all the questions. So, 20 minutes out of 25, that's pretty good. So, you have five minutes to, like, check over. Because none of the questions are really hard that you really need to, like, really do. Because the harder ones would be, like, 19, 17, maybe, um, 15, maybe 14, and maybe 13. Um, none of these pages, none of 8 through 12, maybe 7, because you might have read it wrong, you thought it was a lot of operations, so it was really hard, but it really isn't. And maybe 3 and 4, because, like, you might have misread so, that's basically it for the non-calculator. Okay, let's start with the calculator section now. Um, all the formulas are here uh, in the bottom if you need to ever use it again. So yeah, 55 minutes for 38 questions. Question 1. John runs at different speeds at a part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during the workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing? So you need to find out when the line is strictly increasing, so it has to look like this, and it's strictly decreasing, so it has to go back down. So there's no weight in between. So anything that looks like upside, outside, upside down V, which is only from 40 to 60. So the answer is B. Pretty basic question, it's just a basic chart interpretation. If A is equal to KX where K A is a constant and B and Y is equal to 25 when X is equal to 4, what's the value of Y when X is equal to 5? So when Y is equal to 24, then X is equal to 6. That means K has to equal to 4. So y is equal to when 4, we need to find out what's y when x is equal to 5. So y is equal to 20. So the answer is C. In the figure above, lines L and K are parallel and S and T are parallel. If, line, if, if the measure of angle 1 is 35, what's the measure of angle 2? Okay, let me draw this picture out for you. So they say angle 1 is 35 degrees, and they're asking what is angle 2. Since these, since line um, uh, L and M are parallel, that means X has to be the same thing as right here. And since S and T are parallel, that means X is also right here. So all these are X's, and the, and the ones parallel right here are also X's. And anything else would be 35 degrees, because they're all parallel. Since you know straight lines are 180 degrees, that means x plus 35 has to equal 180. That means x has to equal 145. So the answer is D. Question 4. If um, This is just a basic geometry question anyways. Question 4. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what's the value of 8x? So, 16 plus 4x is 8. is equal to 14 plus 10, because that's basically what it means. So, 4x is equal to 16 minus 14 is negative 2, negative 2 plus the 10 is 8, so x is equal to 2. So, what's the value of 8x? So, 8x is basically just 16. Is 8 times 2 is 16. So the answer is C. Five. Which of the following uh, best shows a strong negative association between D and T? So you, when they give you a, a scatter plot, a, a negative association would be like the line is going down. And it will be strong if a lot of points are like really, really close to it. Like a weak association would be like if all the points are like spread out but still going down. 
but it's like really really spread out so the one closest is d because all these points are close together but all the um but the to like a negative association but it's like really close so the, there's only two of them there's only a and d but um d has closer points so that's a basic scatter plot question a hospital store store uh, a hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one gram doses are there in one two decagram containers? So based on the box, uh, two decagrams would equal 10 grams. So right now we have 20 grams. And one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So we have 20,000 milligrams. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I wrote all that. Just MG. So the answer is D. Um, the way that I usually learn how to do this is that you're if you're losing track of all your unit, is there's something called dimensional analysis. So what you have right now is that you have decagrams, right? And then you want to do a conversion. You multiply by whatever you want to take out, you put on the bottom. So decagram is right here. One decagram is equal to 10 grams, right? So that cancels the decagram. So you just do the exact same thing uh, again. So now you already have grams. So you want to take out grams to milligrams. So one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. So when you multiply this, this and this cancels out. So you're just left with the milligrams on top. So that's usually how you, I do dimensional analysis. Uh, question six, question seven. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what's the appropriate label for the vertical axes of the graph? As like shown in the answers, like is it represented by tens, hundred thousands, or tens of thousands? So first we need to find out the sum. So A has nine, B has five, uh, C has six, D has 4, and E has like 3.5. So and that together, that's 14, that's 20, 24, and 27.5. So what is 27,500 divided by 27.5? That would be equal to 1,000. So the answer would be C, because it's represented in thousands. Question eight, for what value of n is n minus one, which is an absolute value, plus one is equal to zero. So n minus one absolute value plus one is equal to zero. So n minus one absolute value is equal to negative one, which doesn't make sense because this one, this side, the, the left side is either zero or positive, while the, uh, the right side is always negative because it's negative one which doesn't make sense at all. So these would never be equal. So there is no solution, which is D. Because if you even plug in uh, the, uh, the um, 0, 1, or 2 into N from answers A, B, and C, like none of them would be the same. So that's another way you could solve the question. But uh, as shown, like at, for these type of questions, like if you, not all type questions in the SAT should, is able to be solved. Sometimes there's just no information which is really rare, like really, really, really rare. Or there's questions like these in question eight, where like the um, the fundamental ideas of some of these uh, things just contradict each other. Like how the absolute value is positive and the other side is negative. So it never makes sense at all. So that's a tricky question. It's not hard, but it's tricky. Question nine and 10 referring to the following information. A is equal to 1052 plus 1.8, 1 uh, 1.0 AT. The speed of a sound of air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the sound wave uh, in feet per second, and T, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, which the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed of sound waves. So we want to find uh, T equals to something. So A minus 1052 divided by 1.08 is equal to T. So you just have uh, the A 
subtracted by that constant, which is 1.0, 1, uh, 1052, and then divided by the, the slope, which is 1.08. So that's how you get T. So that would be answer A. Pretty basic question, just rewriting uh, variables to find out what they represent in a different manner. Which of the following air temperatures would be the speed of a sound wave closest to 1,000 feet per second? So, um, so A is 1,000 feet per second, and we need to find out T. So subtract uh, 1,052 from both sides, you get negative 52 is equal to 1.08 T. So negative 52 divided by 1.08, it's approximately, sorry, it's approximately um, four, negative 48, if you just use your calculator. So the answer would be um, B. Pretty basic question. Um, which of the following numbers is not a solution of inequality 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 3? So 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 3. Since I want to keep the uh, x positive, I'll subtract 3x from both sides. So negative 5 is greater than or equal to x minus 3. And you add 3 from both sides, so negative 2 is greater than x. So x has to be like negative 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 5, negative 7. So anything like, like negative 2 just has to be greater than x. So the only one that's not a solution is negative 1. So the answer is A. Well, based on the histogram above of the following, which is this, which, uh, which is the closest to the average arithmetic means of the seeds per apple? First, we need to find uh, the number of seeds. So there are so based based on the uh, uh, graph, it's telling us that there's two apples with three seeds. So so that means there are six seeds in total from that one. So five times four is twenty. Six times one is six. 7 times 2 is 14, and 9 times uh, 3 is 27. So that's add up to 26, 32, um, 46, and 73. I think that adds up together. 26, 32, 46, and 73. Yeah. If you use your calculator, it should be faster too, so you won't make any math mistakes. I'm just doing this in my head, so it would just be... I'm a, I'm a lot faster with my head, unless it's like with decimals, like the last question. I mean the last two questions at question 10. So we need to find the number of apples now. So there are two apples. Uh, um, then there was four apples. Then there's one. There's two. And then there's three. So that's six, seven, ten, twelve. So 73 divided by 12 would be the arithmetic mean. So I'll use your calculator for this one, then 3 divided by 12, which is approximately 6. So the answer is C. Question 13. A group of 10th graders respond to a survey and ask which math course they are currently enrolled in. The uh, survey's data was broken down in the data above. Which of the following categories account for approximately 90% of the survey accountants? So, of all survey accountants. So basically, you want to find out what is 19% of all. So right now, so all of them is in total, as shown in the chart, is 310. So we need to find 90% of that. So 310 times 19% is about 59, 58 or 59 ish so what number in the chart is 58 or 59 that is the males taking geometry so that will be answer c the table above lists the uh, lengths to near inch of 
of a, a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error of the mean, median, and range of the list above, which would change the most if uh, the 24 measurement is removed from the data. Okay, so this question is basically interpreting the chart and understanding like your basic statistics. So mean and medians are considered centers. That's what they are, mean and medians. Like, the, it's where the data is centered around, hence the name centers. Range has to do with something called spread. So it's like a variation from the, um, from the mean. So let's say like, uh, I'll give you a basic example. Let's say you flip a, um, a coin twice. You expect to get one head and one tails, but like, in real life, sometimes this never, this almost like never happens sometimes. Um, which, I mean, the probably is not that low, but still, like, let's say you get like two heads or two tails. So the variation, the spread would be like, it's one. Because you expect one head and one tails, but you got two heads. So when you expect it one heads, or like when you get two tails and you expect it one tail. So the spread is one. So that's basically what, what they're talking about, the mean and median. Since we see a bunch of data from like 8 to like 16, and they're really clustered around that much because you have like multiple 9s, multiple 10s, 11, 12, 13s, and 14s, and 15s, and the 16s and 8, the 16 and the 8 is like really close to the data, then the mean and the median wouldn't um, be changing as much uh, as the range because the 24, like, it's just like such a huge amount that, expre that changes the spread. So the center would still be because, because the center is where what what the center means is where the majority of the data is centered at. So majority is centered around these from eight to fifteen. So what's gonna change with a high number like twenty four is that like you increase the spread because you might have a chance to get like a really um big number, or you just like so that's one way to think about it. So the answer would be range. But another way to think about it is like let's look at mean. Mean is just be like the sum of all numbers um, divided by the amount of numbers. So you have 3, 2, 4, 6, 7. So you have uh, 21 numbers and you have all these, like if you add all these numbers and you divide by 21, that means the 24 will get like even smaller because you add all these numbers because it's like a majority from is 8 to 16. So think about it that way. The median will almost like never change based on like, let's say it's not even 24, we'll say it's 30. Like, it will, it will make, like, no difference. Um, the range, um, the range will affect the most because you have, because the range is calculated by the maximum minus the minimum. So if the number is getting bigger, like, from 24 to, like, 100 to 120, then range is going to keep getting bigger. D is incorrect because not, usually, like, it never changes by the same amount. Or, um, so th those are, like, a faster way to solve it. So the two faster ways, like, the... The um the slower way would be like if you actually calculate everything by hand, the mean, median, and range, which would take a while. But if you if you know how to use your calculator, it's pretty fast. You plug in the data in like a spreadsheet, and you could just like do it. Like uh for the Inspire CX, you could just put it all in a spreadsheet, and you could just like use menu to find out a bunch of all these data, which is really easy. But it might take a long a while, which is for like a really basic question like fourteen. Question fifteen and sixteen return to the following. Graph above shows the total cost C, uh, by the y, y, var uh, y axis, of the renting boat for H hours, which is the X axis. What does the C intercept uh, represent in the graph? The C intercept will probably represent the um the Y intercept. So the Y intercept is five. So just rep since the equation is the total cost of renting the boat by hour, that means the five must be the initial cost. So the answer is just A. Um. 16. Which of the following represents the uh, relationship between H and C? As I said before, you can just look at the graph. The graph shows that when X equals 0, the thing is 5. So Y equals like something minus multiplied by X is plus 5. So you just look at point zero five and uh, 1, 8. Uh, so it goes up uh, from 5 to 8 from X coordinate to 1. So, it, so it's a slope of 3. So the answer is C. Pretty basic. Question 17. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For which value of x is 
of f of x is at its min minimum. The minimum is the point in the graph that is the lowest on the bottom. So the lowest is the, the second point to the left, which shows negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So at x equals negative 3. So that's when it's at negative 2. So the answer is C. Um, question 18. I mean, am I calling that wrong? Oh, I mean, for what value of, uh, value of x? So it, the answer is B. Sorry. I, I read the question wrong. Oh, sorry. I wrote P. It's B. Because it's asking for the x value. So you might get, like, uh, I'm not sure you get this wrong. I just made a mistake. So you might want to read it like I just did right now. Like I miss read it and thought what's the value of y when it's asking for the value of x. So be the lookout for that. And the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system equation above, which of the following of the relationship between a and b must be true? So you plug in 0, 0 for both. So 0 is less than negative 0 plus a. And 0 is greater than 0 plus b. So a has to be greater than 0, and 0 has to be greater than b. That means a has to be greater than b. Because a is positive and b is negative, as shown by these equations. So a is greater than b, which is, uh, uh, the answer is a. Pretty basic. Um, a food, uh, truck. Uh, sell salad for six dollars and fifty cents each, and drinks for two dollars each. The food delivery, food trucks revenue revenue from selling a total of two hundred nine salads and drinks in one day was eight hundred and thirty six dollars and fifty cents. How many salads were sold that day? We'll use salads as s, so the amount of money would be six point five s. Sorry. Plus. Um, we'll use uh, D for drinks is equal to 836.5. And the number of um, salads and drinks sold is 209. So we'll multiply the second equation by negative 2. So that makes negative 2S minus 2D is equal to negative 518. I mean 14. Now we add those together. So that will be 4.5S is equal to um, 418.5. So S would, using your calculator, you have 418.5 divided by 4.5, you have 93. So how many salads were sold that day would equal to 93. So the answer is B. So 19 is B. So usually you don't want to spend time solving everything else. Since we already got S and the question is looking for S, we don't want to find D. So it's just a waste of time. But you could if you want if you want to like double check your answers are correct. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gives a 20% disc, uh, discount off its original price. The total amount she paid to the uh, cashier was P dollars, including a 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Of the following represents the original which the following represents the original price of the um, computer in terms of P. Let's say the original uh, price is X, right? So, um, she had a 20% discount. So that means the total cost she made is 1 minus 1.02 times X. She had, so she had to ta pay 80% of the amount. And then of that amount, she has to pay a 8% um, sales tax. So 0 0.8 times uh, 1.08. This is 1 plus 8 percent. And you have to multiply those numbers together, uh, for x. And that's the amount she paid for p. So we need to find x. So we need, uh, so it will be p divided by 0 0.8 times, um, 1.08. So the answer would be d. Pretty a uh, basic question. It's just working with money. But you just keep reversing um, variables to find out the answer. Uh, 21. The data in the table above was produced by a sleep researcher studying the amount of dreams people recall when they are asked to record their dreams for one week. 
Group X consists of 100 people who observe early bedtime, and Group Y consists of 100 people who observe later bedtimes. A person is chosen at random from those who recall at least one dream. What's the probability that the person belonged to A? So we need to find out what's it out of. So it's uh, out of a person who called at least one dream. So based on the table, that's the 39 and the 125. This is 1 to 4 and 5 or more, so at least 1. So that's a total of um, 164. And out of that 164, um, how many belong to group Y, which is the 11 out of 60, uh, 11 and the 68, which is the 79 in total. So 79 out of 164. So the answer is C. Pretty basic question. It's just a basic chart interpretation. Question 22 and 23 refers to the following information. The table above lists the annual budget in $1,000 for each of the six different state programs in Kansas from 2007 to 2010. 22. Which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture, natural resources in uh, Kansas from 2008 to 2010? So agriculture and resources is the top one, 2008 and 2010. So the rate would be 4, 8, 0, 0, 1, 0, 6, and 3, 5, 8, 7, 0, 8. Okay, and that's over the span of from 2008 to 2010. So it's over two years. So the change from 4,000, from the 4,888, uh, uh, 488,000, uh, 106 minus 358,708 is 1,129,398 1, divided by 2 because over 2 years. And that is a roughly about 65,000 um, per year. But since this, uh, as shown by like the information above, is represented in thousands. So you got to add like 3 more zeros well, you just, because you multiply by 1,000. So you have 65 mil. So the answer is B. So that's question 22. Question 23. Out of the following, which uh, program's ratio of its 2007 budget to 2010 budget is closest to the human uh, resource program of its 2007 to 2010? So the human uh, resource program 2007 to 2010, it's a 4,051,050 divided by um, 5921,379, which is about 0.68. So we'll go from answers A to D. Agriculture and production, which is 373. 904 divided by 488106 is uh 76 per 76 I mean 77%. Now education is 2164607 divided by 3008036 which is 71. So that's our uh, closest one because the previous one was 77. Um, highways and transportation, which is 1468-482 divided by 1773-893, um, which is 82%, 83%, which is uh, a lot further from 72, so our, still the closest is uh, education. Public safety, 263-463 divided by 464-233 which is uh, 57%, which is lower, but 72% is closer. So the closest number is education. So the answer is B. So 23 is pretty simple, but it just takes a lot of time. 24, which of the following is the equation of the circle in the xy plane with center 0, 4, and radius, and points 4 thirds of uh, 5? So, uh, center of a circle, uh, the standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to radius squared. 
So where h and k is the coordinates of the center. So the center is 0, 4. So it's x squared plus y minus 4 squared. So we need to find the radius now. So um, it's at 0, 4. And the radius will end points here. So the, we just need to find out like what's the hypotenuse. So 0 to uh, 1, 4. To 4 over 3 is just 4 over 3. So that's side length 1. Let's square that. Plus uh, 4 to 5 is just 1. So that's square root that. So that would be um, 16 over 9 plus 1, which is just 25 over 9 square root. So this will equal to R. So square root that is just 5 over 3. So this will equal to um, R squared. So squared, this one is just 25 over 9. So the answer is uh, A. So pretty basic question if you just know your circuit formula. So this would be one of like not a passport to advanced math, hard algebra, or data analysis. This would be like one of those like other ones that talk about like geometry. The equation uh, above expresses the approximate uh, height h in meters of a ball t seconds after it's a lot launch uh, vertically upward from a brown with the initial velocity is 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? Um, so we want to find what, when t, uh, h is equal to zero, because that's when the height, when it hits the ground, the height is equal to zero. So that's equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 25 t. So I'll distribute out the t from uh, both, which makes 4.8 t plus um, 25. Since 4.9 t is really close to like 5. I'll just do like a rough estimation and say this is negative 5t plus 25. So t is equal, this equation is equal to 0 if t is equal to 0 or t is equal to 5. If it's negative 5 times 5, it's negative 25 plus 25 to 0. So it's either 0 or 5, but it's not going to be answer 0. because It's going to be like how many seconds after because when t is equal to 0, that means it's uh, it, it, the ball is already on the ground, so that's when it's first thrown, which is getting higher. So the uh, the time is 5. So it's always the later one. Initially, it will be 0. Later on, it would be 5. So if they ever ask for initial, it would be 0. So the answer would be D. Pretty basic uh, quadratic question. Uh, Katrina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A produces 20% more pears than type B. Based on Katrina's op observation, if type A produces 144 pears, how many pears did type B produce? So type A produces 20% of B, more than B, so it will be A is equal to 1.2B. So if A is 144, then we just need to find B. So 144 divided by 1.2 equals like uh, 120, which is answer B. Uh, you can use your calculator for this. Uh, I just did a rough estimation because 144 divided by 1.2, 1 1.2 is like 12. And I know 12 squared is 144. So I just need to multiply by 10. Uh, by the other one, so to get 144. So I think the answer is B. But you could just probably use your calculator to double check if my math is right. 27. A square feet measuring 10 by 10 meters, uh, measured by 10 by 10 meters. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is a square that has side length one of 1 meter, and no two regions overlap. The students count the earthwork contained in the, soil, er, in the soil in a depth of 5 meters beneath the ground surface in each region. The results are shown in the table below. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of 5 meters beneath the ground in the entire field? Okay, first we need to find the amount of soil in the sample, and then we need to scale up to the entire field. So there's 10 students, and each of them are marking up a square, which is 1 by 1. So 10 students of a 1 by 1 
is uh has an area of one, so that's a total of just ten um meters squared of area covered. When the actual thing is ten times ten, which is a hundred meters squared. So whatever we find in our sample, we need to multiply by ten, which is the theoretical amount. So the number of earthworms we just got to add up from A to J is 107 plus 147 plus 146 plus 135, 149, 141, 150, um, 154, 176, and 166. So that's about like 1,471 multiplied by that by 10. So you got... 14,710. So the closest number is C. So the answer is C. Um, if the system of inequalities x is greater than 2x plus 1 and x is greater than, I mean, greater than or equal to 2x plus 1 and y is greater than 1 half x minus 1 is graphed in the xy plane above, which the following co coordinate contains no solution to the equation? So first, we want to draw the coordinate. So 2x plus 1 will look something around like this. So it's all the data above right here, right? And 2x minus... And 1 half minus 1 would be something like this, where it goes through negative, and then here's positive over here. And it has to be above it, so it has to be above right here. So it will be like this part above. So overall, like these, bo both of these graphs together would um, get like this portion answered, because that's where they overlap. So these are the answers. So which... Uh, so, um, Coordinate does not contain, uh, coordinate 1 contains it, coordinate 2, coordinate 3, and only coordinate 4 doesn't contain anything. So the answer is C. Twenty-nine. A polynomial Px, uh, the value of P3 is negative 2, which the final must be true about Px. Okay, this, um, if you read the answer choices, it's talk about factors and remainders. Basically, um... This is a pre-calculus question. It has to be some, something called the remainder theorem. So uh, what it says is that if P of a number, let's say A, is equal to um, another number that's not equal to 0, then, um, then Px divided by x minus A is the, has a remainder Um, sorry. Has a remainder of um, p of b, so that's what it says. So p of three is equal to negative two. So when p of x is divided by x minus three, the remainder is negative two. So which is set by d. Um, if you don't know it, then I I, I can't really like tell you how you should know it has but like i guess a one way to think about it is like let's say you have a graph right let's just say you have some kind of polynomial so and we say um p of three is equal to negative two or something like that like that's so like this is where the point is so uh when it says um it's a factor what they're looking for is that they're looking for zeros. So they're looking for points like right here. They're, they're looking for these points that they're looking for. Since this is not a factor, it's going to be a point here and it's got to leave a remainder. See, that's basically what, they, what they're talking about. So I guess in like a graph sense, this, I guess you could kind of find the answers. But if you don't know, just choose the answers that's different like these. Um, I mean, like if you don't know, then just choose the one that's different like... You're going to get it wrong either way, probably. But if you know it, it's a pretty basic question. Question 30, the last um, multiple choice. Which the following is a equivalent form of the equation above shown in the xy plane. Which the, from which of the coordinate A can be identified as the con... The coordinates of vertex A can be identified in the constant. So, um, this is asking for like a, a quadratic in, co in coordinate form for the vertex. 
the uh, coordinate form in the vertex will basically be y is equal to like some constant times 1 minus the um the h squared plus k or hk is the uh, coordinate of the vertex so based on our um equation it's at like 1 negative 16 so it'll be x minus 1 squared and k is 16 so we just need to find a um since you look at the a graph in the equation above, there's an equation on top that represents the graph, which is y is x squared minus 2x minus 15. So if you expand this out, this would be x squared, um, let's say this is a, right, minus 2x plus 1 times a. Um, oops, sorry, I wrote that wrong. The equation is wrong, sorry guys, which is minus 16, okay, a. If you expand this out, this will be x squared minus 2x plus 1 times a minus 16. You find out that a is equal to 1, because then this would be because then this uh, equation would be equivalent to the um the equation shown in the uh, in the graph that's above the graph. So um this equation would just be the same as uh y is equal to x minus 1 squared minus 16. So the answer is D. Pretty basic question, if you know it. More, uh, most of this exam just like tests you if you know your stuff rather than testing you like based on like difficulty. 31. Uh, the free responses. Watt can husk at least 12 dozen corns of when it airs a coin per hour and at most 12 dozen coins airs a coin per hour. Based on this information, what's the possible it could take what for like 72? Okay, so we got 12 and 18, so we gotta look for the rate. So 72 divided by, I mean not the rate, for the, for the time. So rate for 12 coin per hour, 12 dozen for 72 dozen would be 6, so it would be 6 hours. And 72 divided by 18, the other number, is 4 hours. So any number from like 4 to 6 hours is the answer. So what is a possible amount? Uh, since a possible amount just means like any number, it just means like any number between 4 and 6. Usually I just choose 5 because it's the middle number. So just any number between 4 and 6 would be the answer. Question 32. The posted weight limit for a uh, covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 6, pounds. A delivery puck, a truck is carrying X identical uh, boxes, each weighing uh, 14 pounds, which will pass over the bridge. If the combined weight of the empty truck and its driver is uh, 4,500 4, 4, pounds, what's the maximum uh, value of X will keep the combined weight uh, below the weight limit? Okay, so we need to find, like, the weight of the empty truck and the driver, which is 4,500, plus the weight of the boxes. So each box is weighing um, 14 pounds, and there's X of them. So that's 14X, which is less than 6,000 pounds. So we should check 4,500 4, to get 1,500, and X is uh, less than 1,500 divided by 14. It's about like uh, 107 plus 14, like 3. So the greatest integer is 107. So the answer is 107. You can plug in 107 back in to check if it's less than uh, 6,000, which it is probably. So the answer is 107. Um, 33, according to the line of graph above, and the number of Portable uh, media players sold in 2008 is what fraction of the number sold in 2011. So we need to find out what's made in 2008, which is 100, or about 100, I think. All over um, 2011, which is 160. So simplifying this, we get like about 5 8. So that's the answer. This is just a basic uh, graph interpretation. Pretty basic. Uh, question 34. A local television station sells time slots for programs in 30-minute uh, intervals. If the op 
If the station operates 24 hours per day, every day of the week, what's the total number of 30 minute interval slots the station could sell for Monday, for Tuesday and Wednesday? So Tuesday and Wednesday is two days, and each day is 24 hours. So two times 24 is you have 48 hours, and you have 30 minute intervals, which uh which is just half an hour. So how many like half hours are there for 48? So that's just 48 divided by one and a half. Which is the same thing as 48 times 2. So 48 times 2 is 96. So the answer is just 96. Pretty basic. You could just like also do dimensional analysis for this. It's not that hard. So it'll be like 2 hours equals like 60 minutes. And then like there's 30 minutes. Uh, 35. A, fair, a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of a right cylinder... Right circular cylinder above. If the volume of the silo is 72 pi cubic yards, what's the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? So this is just a basic uh, 3D shape. So they usually just ask like a cylinder, probably per SAT. If you just know it's not that hard. So um, the volume of a uh, cylinder is just the area of the base, which is a circle. So it's pi radius squared times its height. So the volume we're given that was 72 pi equals to pi. We don't know what the radius is. And we know the height is 8. So 72 pi divided by pi over 8 is 9. Radius equals to radius squared. So the radius is equal to 3. The diameter is just 2 times the radius. So the diameter is just 6. So the answer is just 6. Um, 36. Uh, h of x is equal to 1 over 8, x minus 5 squared plus 4 times x minus 5 plus 4. What's the value of x if h above is undefined? Um, so we need to find out when the denominator is equal to 0. That's when it's undefined. So, uh, an easier way, the fact... Uh, I'll do the uh, slower method first. First, I'll just expand out everything. So it'll be x squared minus 10x. So, sorry. x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then it will be 4x minus 20. And there's 4 left over. So this will make x squared minus 6x uh, minus, wait, x squared um, minus 6x. Uh, plus 9. So this will factor out to x minus 3 squared, which is, which all these are supposed to equal to 0. I mean, oops, this entire thing equals to 0, equals to 0, 0. So x is equal to 3, so that's the answer. But the faster way would be, you don't really have to expand this all out. Um, It would be something like this. Since I already know, x, let's just assume x minus 5 is like another variable, let's say a, right? So that would be a squared plus 4a plus 4. So you really don't have to do this expanding. So you can just factor this out first. So a plus 2 squared uh, is equal to 0. So a has to be equal to negative 2. This x factor out the same thing. And you know a is equal to x minus 5. So you just put negative 2 equals to x minus 5. And x is equal to 3, which is the same answer. It's a faster way to do it. Because it might look like there's just a lot, because like it's not centered around x, but it's x minus 5. But it's not that much more difficult. Uh, uh, question 37 and 38 refer to the following information. Jessica opens a bank account that earns 2% uh, interest compound annually. Her initial deposit was $100. She used the uh, expressions 100 times x to the power of t to find the value of her account after t years. What's the value of x? X would just be the rate. The rate is always just 1 plus the percentage. Percentage. So basically, the percentage is 2. So it's just 1 plus 0 0.02. So it's just 1.02. So that's the answer. Um, but it's just how exponentials work. If you don't know, you could just study more exponentials. 38. Just because friend Tashan... Found an account that earns 2.5% interest compound annually. So Sean made an initial deposit of $100 into his account. At the same time, just kind of made a, a deposit of $100 into her account. After 10 years, how many money? 
how much money will uh Deshaun's initial uh, deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? De uh, deposit. Round your answer to the nearest cent and ignore the dollar sign when reading your response. So first we need to find um, Tashan's amount. His equation is basically the same thing, but instead of 2% is 2.5%. So it'll be 100, uh, 1.025 to the power of 10 because it's in 10 years. And Jessica's amount, which is based on using the equation, is 100 times 1.02 to the power of 10. So Tashan's amount is 1.025 to the power of 10 times 100. It's about $128. And then Jessica's is 1.02 to the power of 10 times 100, which is about $122. But if you use your calculator, you're going to get more precise answers. So just don't round and just like subtract both those numbers and you get about like $6.11. So that's the answer, 6.11. Um, let's go back to question one. Okay, um, one, one through four should be pretty basic. These are really basic questions, so it should be like uh, less than a minute. Um, five and six should also be less than a minute. Seven might take a while because you have to count everything and then multiply and stuff. Eight is tricky, so you might want to like think about this. But since you could like plug in all these answers, like there's almost no way you could get that one wrong. Unless you really think D is not right, then you just randomly choose A, B, or C, even though all of them are wrong. Then that's the only way you could get it wrong. You might want to double check seven though, because you might have counted it wrong. You might have multiply wrong. Um. 9 through 11 should be pretty simple, less than a minute or so. 12, you want you might want to like uh, redo the math just in case you like did some of the multiplying and adding wrong or dividing, you know. 13, you might want to double check because you might have read it wrong. Because there's this and uh, there's the words and the chart. Same thing with 14 if you want to be really precise. Um... 15 and 16 are pretty easy, also with 17, so it'd be like less than a minute. Oh, like the harder ones, like for 14 and like 13, maybe take you a minute or so, it shouldn't take you that long. Um, 18, pretty basic, I mean just plug in the coordinates and you'll find it. 19 might take you a while, but since you have a calculator, it's not that hard. You shouldn't get that hard, wrong, so like a minute or so. 20, not that hard, like a minute or so. 21, not even that hard. It'd probably like take you some seconds. 22 and 23, based on the chart, like it's not that hard. Just look at the information and you get it right. 24, if you don't know what a circle it is, like how it's generally like uh, written, you might get it wrong. But other than that, like you know it's right. 25, 26. Is pretty simple. 27 you might want to redo like a couple of times just to make sure it's right because there's a bunch of like words and then there's this chart and there's a bunch of math you also had to do. Because you had to like um count the you had to do the scaling you had to add everything together and then you had to like uh, multiply those to like find the answer so you might have gotten some something wrong along the way and there's a bunch of reading also. 28, um, not that hard, if you just draw a picture, anything that you could draw a picture, you probably want to draw a picture, but for like quadratics and stuff, you might not want to, because like, usually when the SAT gives quadratic questions, you can solve it like numerically, it's not really that hard. 20 is like a pre-calculus question, if you don't know the theorem, then you might get it wrong, just choose the question that's different, the answer that's different. I can't say anything else about that, so you might get that one wrong. 30, um... If you just know how to write the form, it's just say vertex. Just find the equation that looks like a vertex. So, it just looks like A and B, one of them has to be wrong. Because, like, it, it just doesn't make sense if one of them doesn't factor out right. Um, a C would never make sense in question 30 for the answer. Because there's no such thing in uh, 
and like quadratics where it's just x times x minus some other number. Like there's no such thing that like it works like that. Uh, there's it's just not a form. D um is like the vertex form. A and B will be considered the um intercept form where you, when you're like trying to solve for the zeros. The SAT will probably test on those though. So those are like the two forms. Uh, it's not really that hard either. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, all of should be pretty basic. I mean, it's just basically looking at information. It's not that hard. 36, you might spend some time on. You might want to double check to make sure you're right. 37, 38, just deal with exponentials. So you, you get these right, probably, if you know your exponential stuff. Um, out of all these information, based on this exam, like, the difficulty is pretty easy. You should have gotten, for the non-calc, for the non-calc portion, you should have gotten a, f you should have gotten perfect, or so, like, or one wrong if you made a mistake. But, best case scenario is perfect. For the calculator section, you might miss like a few questions like if you don't know your pre-calc you'll get 29 wrong like uh, only like the last few questions are actually pretty difficult like you might get 29 wrong and like 30 and 28 i mean i think you could kind of just like think about it and you get it right 27 you might get wrong because you might have missed red um i don't think the other ones you could have gotten wrong you might gotten like two wrong in here maybe and so Two questions wrong, you get to like a 780. Um, there's also curves on SAT, so and you might get like even higher. But 780 is a pretty good number, so 750 plus possible. This this is one of the easier uh, SAT ones. So this this test is more in your knowledge rather than your skill. Uh, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next Math Record video for a practice exam 2.